Welcome to everybody. All right. So this evening, I'll be talking about managing citations to make information research and paper writing easier. I'm going to get started, though, instead of leaping right into that. And uh, I know that was a little bit of a wait before starting the leap, so to speak. But let's take a moment and uh, just come together. And if anybody has been running around and trying to get here and trying to get ready, just come. We're all here. We're together. And let's take a moment just to take a breath. To smell the air and to feel how we're breathing. To listen to the sounds around us. And if it's something distracting, acknowledge it and set it aside. To feel the support that you have from your chair or from the ground if you're standing. And know that we're all here together to learn together and to share. And take another breath in. And back out. And then we come back together, start opening our eyes. And here we are all, are all together. And thank you so very much. Alrighty, I am going to start by sharing my screen. And, well, that's very exciting where we can see that uh, not going to be sharing anything further uh, from the sign up um, right there. Okay, as I said, managing in citations to make information research and paper writing easier. So citation management software can make your life easier both on the aspect of doing research and also from the standpoint of writing papers. It can allow you to easily share your research with others. Now this um, is very handy if you are working with a classmate on a presentation together, if you are uh, working on a paper for publication, if you're working on your master's thesis or your dissertation, that uh, members of your committee can see and comment on the information you're pulling together and vice versa, that you can comment and ask questions. Um, also, you may have run across this in your classes where your professors may be asking you to let them see the uh, research that you're doing for a class paper. So this is something that we'll be covering. And also um, discussing how to pick the best product for you. So easier literature search. Well, you can click to save individual articles. Um, this is really handy. And um, there are a number of different citation managers out there. Uh, most of them are set up that you do a click and whoosh, downloads. Um, some of them may take a couple clicks, but you can save individual articles. You can also, if you have something that's not online, where it's not a click to save, um, but say you have a book or you have a printed article, ooh, you can get it in there by typing things in by hand. And it prompts you with all the information that you need to enter. You can also click to save multiple articles from a list. I don't know how many of you may use Google Scholar, but that's actually a really handy one that you can be using Google Scholar and going, you know, this looks good, that looks good, ooh, and that, and that, and that. And you can just get them all at once, um, something really very handy, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, it's possible that you may be able to import PDFs. Uh, this is something that depending on which product you're using and where you are downloading from, you may be able to get the PDFs just whoosh, coming along with your citations, um, which is definitely the easy way to go. Or you may have a program that lets you download the citation, but not grab the PDF at the same time. So you can choose to upload it or not. 
A uh, feature that, uh, if you haven't seen this before, is just really very, very handy, is the ability to annotate or highlight PDF articles. Um, this is really helpful for being able to go back and, and leave notes for yourself and over time be uh, reviewing what you've found so that you don't have to go back and say, ah, you know, I thought that in Smith and Ramanathan, there was something good in here. Doggone it, what was it? And they have to read the whole article over all over again. If you are able to annotate it or highlight portions of it, um, it's a real time saver. Of course, you can sort things into folders. I mean, pretty much anything with a computer lets you sort into folders. And you can add your own tags or subjects or keywords to records. And that may seem like something uh, foreign and unusual, or it may seem kind of obvious. But let's take a look at some of these things. So now I am going to hop over and go into, um, well, actually, this is Zotero, but I am going to go into um, Firefox, which I had open and then closed, <laughs> um, and now be able to demonstrate a few things. So let us say, we are going into the library. So I go, Sabric Library. Um, have you all had a chance to use the Sabric Library before? Yes. Okay. Um, by the way, feel free to ask questions as we go along uh, if you have any questions. And thank you so much for, for responding. So when we go into the library, we can use OneSearch, which searches most of the databases all at the same time, which is really very handy. Um, we can also go into individual databases um, using the A to Z database list. We can hop in here and say, uh, you know, search for a specific database or just click on one or go by subjects and say, you know, I want things on education, et cetera, et cetera, and find things. Um, however, I'm going to use OneSearch for the immediate moment. And, you know, I'm going to say, I frankly want peer reviewed articles, please. So go, I'm going to be looking for worker training and waiting just a second here. And discovering this is a little bit hard to see. So let me make this a little bit bigger so you guys can see it a little bit better. And I see that there are articles here and hmm. Oh, let's take a look at this particular article. And I say, you know, this looks good. I can um, notice here that I could save this to RefWorks. Ref RefWorks is a type of citation management software, Zotero, EndNote. There are others out there as well. Um, if I decide, OK, you know, I want to save that. I can go right here. I can save it and say, hey, search for full text. And RefWorks is not perfect. It may or may not grab it. We shall find out. And so I am importing this. And so I did one click. And that says full text not found. Well, doggone it. Full text was there. But anyway, um, I can go to the last thing I've imported, take a look at it. And I see, aha. Oh, I want to look at the abstract. So here I give. It gives me an overview of this whole thing. I can see tags that have been um, downloaded. In this case, these are subject headings. Um, I can add subject, uh, add tags for myself if I'd like. I can, so I can go in here and uh, I can add files. In this case, since it didn't bring me the article, if I wanted this, I would need to download it, and then attach it. Uh, so on the one hand, that's pain. And on the other hand, it doesn't fill everything up <laughs> too fast um, if you uh, are not necessarily wanting to have attachments. But this gives you a little idea of how that might work. Now, let's say I am using Zotero. This is another one that, that I like a lot. And I say, OK, well, here, download this for me. And I am going to go right here. Yes, do I want to import this? And here I see I have this article. 
Rather, I have this reference and information about it. I have tags, etc. But I have no article. So this would also make me uh, download this uh, if I wanted to find that. So this is training Dory. Now let's say I went to Google, Google Scholar and clicker training. Well, it's the clicker training in Dory. And I have this set up so it'll tell me if the Saybrook Library has something I'm interested in. So um, up here in the upper right hand corner, I have um, the a link to be able to import into Mendeley, which is another um, citation manager. I have one to save to Zotero up here in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to click on Zotero. I'm going to say, you know, that first one, that's the one I looked up. I want to grab that one and I want to get this one. Yeah, let's take a few of these. Okay. And I want you to import them in this case into the last folder that I had open in um, RefWorks, sorry, in Zotero. And this is going to be grabbing things and it starts highlighting them. That starts out faded out as it brings it in and it gets um, darker in color when it's actually downloaded. So it's the process of downloading. Now, if I go over to Zotero, whoopsie, I'll actually go over to Zotero. Why are you not switching? There we go. Um, I can see, okay. Uh, I want to click on this and say, hey, you know, I want to I want to see this one. Give me the full. Come on, open up. There we go. Need a little bit of patience. I think uh, my bandwidth is not as good as it usually is uh, or as it was before five o'clock. So here we go. I can download this. I can do stuff with it. I clicked way too many times. So I got a lot of these things open at the same time. Um, let me hop back over here. And now I see, aha, here we go. Um, I've got a PDF. This time it is taking me directly to the PDF. Um, this PDF has um, been imported into Zotero. And so I have it right here. I can read it, I can do stuff with it. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't bring the tags in. That's the one downfall of using Google Scholar when you're bringing things in that it will not automatically brings in, bring in those subject headings. You can add them if you'd like, but I don't need to mess with um, downloading and uploading a PDF. This is a matter of preference. <laughs> you know, you can, you can uh, do it one way, you can do it the other. Um, but I wanna show you some things here that we can do while we're in the actual article. So let's say I'm looking at this and I uh, say, frankly, this one's, this one's uh, fairly simple. I want a different one. Okay, get this one. Um, okay, here we go. Examination of shaping with an African crested porcupine. And um, let's say I, um, want to see something about zoos and I say you know I want to highlight in yellow that um, clicker training has been used in zoos a whole bunch and yellow could mean whatever it is to me um, I could put a note there that says to me um, uh, Follow, oops, follow up on some of these citations. They could be interesting. So whatever kind of notes you want to put in there, you know. Um, or you could go along and you say, you know, um, blah, 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 blah. Atari participated as an animal ambassador. Okay, for some reason, I want to quote that. Again, you can do whatever you want. But what you might want to do is say that anything you might wish to quote, and so say you might want to quote this, that you say, you know, keep that in green. So that means that the next time you open it, um, you don't need to remember, oh, yeah, I wanted to find out 
more about uh, these citations because I've, with yellow, drawn my attention to it. And oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do with it. Or that I go through and I look for something green and say, oh yeah, that's something that I wanted to cite um, if you wanted to do so. One thing that's kind of nice, it goes through and it gives you the page numbers. And let's see, I don't know if these others that I have open and highlighted, uh, this one is saying page 568. So um, it's not always right, but it generally speaking is right. And it saves you a lot of time that you go, hey, 568, cool. Um, that you can easily uh, find things for uh, citing, um, and quoting and citing and such in your papers. So this is a handy dandy little tool. Um, are all of you familiar with how to have Google Scholar tell you um, whether something is found in full text in the Saberg library? Or rather, does anybody not know how to do this? No. No, right. neither. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm glad I asked. Um, didn't want to just uh, fly past that. So if you have a Google account, so if you have a Gmail, um, if you have Google Docs, any of those things, got a Google account. As long as you're logged into your Google account, which I am, um, I go to the upper left-hand corner of Google Scholar. There's that little, little, I don't know what you call it, the, the pancake, <laughs> stack of pancakes drop box. <laughs> but you click on that, go down to settings, click on settings. There in the left navigation bar, library links is one of the options. And when you have the library links, you can put in TCS education. Blah, 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 blah. All you have to frankly do is type in TCS and search, and it will pull this out right here. And once you've done that, um, when you go ahead and are looking for articles, um, they will pop right up. You just click on them and then it will authenticate um, or depending on the time of day, it may or may not authenticate quickly. <laughs> Usually uh, it is pretty fast and it takes you right in and uh, or it doesn't because I signed out. So now I seem to be signed in. So I'm being prompted for that. Um, oh, and then I need to my uh, duo authentication. Mind you, you don't need to do this every two seconds. It's just if you happen to log to, have logged yourself out uh, in between times, which I did, um, then you need to go ahead and re-authenticate. But once you're logged in, you click, you wait a few seconds, and poof, you will have an article coming right up. And so this is something that's just, I find ever so handy uh, to be able to do with Google Scholar. Um, actually, let me hop back to library databases. I am going to, here in the database list, um, mention to you, seriously, you this is not likely to come up to be a problem, but just to mention to you, um, most of our library databases um, appear in one search within uh, the Saybrook Library when we do a search. They also come up in Google Scholar, as I was demonstrating, once you have uh, told Google Scholar to look for the TCS libraries. Um, if there is a little magnifying glass after the name of the database, it's one that's going to be included in the search. Um, if there isn't one, uh, and I can't find one, uh, well, this is open access anyway, um, anyway, just trust me, there are a few that won't come up that won't be automatically in the search. Oh, here we go. This ag econ search is not automatically there. Um, but for the most part, anything you look up, it's going to look up and uh, find it for you. Um, if you are doing a search and you're looking in one search, uh, so here I'm going to do clicker. Clicker training again. Do, do. I'm telling it peer reviewed. Come on. In case any of you might not be familiar with this, I just want to mention if you uh, do a search and you see this yellow um, bar, it says sign in to get complete results and to request items. You can sign right in. 
And so if you are looking, you haven't found something within the library, um, or you are in Google Scholar, and you're going, oh, I want that, doggone it. It doesn't say that the library has it. Um, you can go looking for it. Um, but uh, let's say this one here, this first one, um, I'm clicking on it, and it says available online instead of giving me the PDF. And it says how to get it. Get a di digital copy delivered in 24 hours by email. Ah. So then I put my name, any notes I might have. I say, hey, I'm going to follow copyright <laughs> law and uh, not do things I'm not supposed to with this and send. And then within uh, 24 hours, you'll have that article. Um, this is free to you. Uh, it's something that the library offers as a service to our Sabre community. So just to let you know, this is here. You may all be familiar with it, but in case you're not, um, this is something really handy to know. All righty. And well, let me go back. We did annotating, highlighting, sorting into folders is pretty obvious. Ah, so the use of tags. I am going to go ahead and go back to um, to uh, Zotero because that's what I have open. We could also do this in, in the other um, uh, citation managers there. Um, I showed briefly, you know, how you could edit if you were in um, RefWorks and do the same in Mendeley or um, uh, EndNote or one of the others. But let's say I'm going to be using this, uh, put in tags. I can put in any tag that I want. So um, there are, actually, let me go find something that I, I pulled in. Let's see, I brought these in. By Google Scholar, let me do. Put all these in this way. Yeah. Do, 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 do. I should have a good example handy. I'm not having a good, good example handy, which I thought I had one. All right, let me hop down here. Let me go in here. Let me. Come on, scroll down. Roll down. Okay. All right. Um, so depending on how you get things there, um, you can add tags um, that uh, are for classes. You can add tags that are um, for anything that you would like. <laughs> um, you can... Yeah, I had some mighty fine examples and then I put them away. Okay, here we go. Um, this is one where I had imported um, different subject headings. Uh, this particular one is uh, Greyhounds, a Corrigan program prepares Greyhounds for adoptions and prisoners for better uh, life. Um, this is using um, uh, folks who are in prisons who are working with dogs. And we have some tags and I can add any tags that I might like. So I might use, you know, the formal subject headings could be prisons and prisoners, um, but maybe, I mean, a jail and a prison is not the same thing, but maybe the, the term that I have in my head is jail. So I can throw in jail as the thing that is in my head when I am looking for this. So let's say I go back and I go, oh shoot, I have one of these articles that had to do with jail. Oh yeah, okay. So that one, and here we go. Oh yeah, it's Corrigan program. There we go. So you can put in your own um, terms if you'd like. It's something that you can go through, you can sort, you can put things in a whole bunch of different folders all over the place and or, if you decide to use tags, you can go through, um, regardless of whether you've sorted anything um, into folders, but you can throw in a few things that are keywords or subjects that you will remember so that you can go back and later go, oh, shoot, you know, there was somebody with a Nobel Prize. What the heck? Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. There it is. Got it. 
because you made a note for yourself that this was something that was important. In this case, it, it's not actually written by somebody who got a Nobel Prize. <laughs> um, I did that for an example. But whatever it is, it's, it's a way that you can find with your own words what uh, the article, how, what the article was about in terms of the, the topic uh, for those terms you have put in there. And you can make any notes that you'd like, uh, again, so that you go back and, and uh, take a look at them. And, you know, if I go here, it's like, hmm, did I actually make any comments on it? No, I didn't. But if I go to some of these others, I can see, you know, did I make Oh yeah, you know, I was highlighting stuff and then uh, I could check what my notes are, et cetera. So that's something that may be useful to you, might not be useful to you, but I wanted to let you know it's possible. So if it's helpful, that's a way to do that. So this is kind of on the literature research end of things. Now, if we wanna write um, a paper, which obviously is, is generally <laughs> someplace along the line, something that you're going to be wanting to do, uh, be it partway along or at the end, but you'll have something to turn in, be it a paper, be it an uh, article for publication, be it a dissertation or a thesis. Um, there are ways to make the writing easier. And um, as you go along, you can be looking stuff up, you can be putting names in, you could be doing all of this by hand and typing and then, oh, I need to put that reference in at the end and oh shoot, no, I didn't need that after all. So you take it out, whoops, you have to remember to go to the reference section, take it out. You know, it can be really tedious to do all of this. Or you could use software that'll help you do it. Um, as I mentioned, um, if you wanted to cite something or quote something from your annotated PDFs, you can go back really easily because you've gotten that available. Again, you don't have to use that. You could use that, but truly it can be really very helpful and you can click to create a reference list. So let's take a look here. And I am going to discover that I don't actually have Word open. So let me open up Word. And once we have it open, I will show an example of how you can be putting things into a paper. So do, 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 do. I want a blank document. I want to bring it over here where we can see it. Dum, de -dum, de -dum. And over here. And I am going to start typing. So this is my first sentence. Not exciting, but you know, let's just pretend. Um, <laughs> so Zotero, so I want to add a citation. What citation style? I want APA 7th edition. And I have told it, hey, automatically update my citations. Um, now, if you're working on a whole dissertation, it can take time if you tell it to automatically do stuff. But frankly, I find it helpful. Um, you can also do it at the end when you're done. But here I have citation Z for Zotero, and I can um, type in, oh, let's see, somebody Smith. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one was it? Oh, yeah, it was that one. And Smith is one of the et al. And I can add that. Okay, there we go. Um, second sentence on the way. All right. I want some more references. So... I am going to add some more citations and I want a different view this time. I want the classic view. So this lets me see all of my folders <laughs> and remember, oh, was it in, oh, let's see the grounds folder and where the heck was it? Oh, I want multiple sources anyway. And, you know, I want to add this one. I want to add that one. I want to add uh, that one. Oopsie, there we go. And voila. I have um, several citations here. Okay, now let's say I get to the end of my of my uh, paper, and now I want to with Zotero. I want to add my bibliography. Poof! There we go, and it has just created it. So you will always, always, always want to double check and see if it did it right. <laughs> Sometimes the information that went in wasn't necessarily correct. Sometimes it couldn't read it. Sometimes it oopses, but you want to double check and make sure that everything meets APA 7th edition standards. 
you'll want to double check it, but it's a true time savings. <laughs> so you can go through and you can go, ah, la, da, da, da. hey, wait a minute, the sentence, this, the case isn't right. Oh, doggone it. How do I do that? So you can fix it by hand, or if you're using Word and possibly some of the other uh, word processing programs. So I can say, hey, tell me how to do sentence case. Come on. Um, change, change to sentence case. And okay, changing the capitalization of the text. I'm not going to through, go through all of it, but it tells me, you know, how I can go ahead and change the case, et cetera, et cetera, if I want to fix that um, and to walk me through it. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell that to go away right now. In the interest of time, we won't go through all of that. But if there's an issue, you can go through and you can find it and you can fix it. And um, it's just a, a real time saver. Anytime that you are um, looking at um, references and adding, you know, having URLs, make sure that your URLs work, that they link to what they're supposed to. Um, let's say I'm going to uh, be adding a third sentence up here or, you know, whatever it is, da 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 da. And I go through, I add another citation. This time I'll do Jones, somebody. Okay, we'll do this. Voila, puts it in, and there we go. It's popped it in there. Um, and uh, we've got this information. So again, you need to double check it, you need to make sure everything's right. Hopefully uh, most or all of it is right, um, but uh, it is really very much of a time saver. Or you can do things by hand. <laughs> um, but this is just uh, a way to help you out. And if you were using one of the other citation managers, um, it's pretty similar. I will say though, and I don't know if you guys have used it, but RefWorks um, is pretty bad. Um, <laughs> it, it has a lot of strengths, but it messes up the URLs and, and the DOIs, the digital object identifiers, really badly a lot. And so it's not just that you have to fix something that's there, you have to go look it up to fix it. And that's um, the main thing I don't like about RefWorks, but I really dislike that about RefWorks. Okay, easy writing we're talking about, easy access. You can use it on your desktop. You can synchronize with the cloud. You can use your mobile device, um, Zotero, uh, or Papership is another app. Um, these are ones that, and I was going to demonstrate, except I can't get into um, this uh, right now, sadly, because I hadn't logged myself in early enough. Um, they're, they're apps that let you get in and uh, access your same articles that you're working with. You can go through, you can annotate things, you can sort stuff into folders. So let's say you're on a bus, you're on a train, you're flying somewhere, you're not the person driving, <laughs> you know, go ahead. And if you want to, and you have some time, um, you can go ahead and look through your references and do something with it. You know, not so important if you're writing a, a shorter paper, but if you're working with something longer term, uh, especially, um, you know, like your thesis or dissertation, um, it can be nice if you have some downtime where you don't have access to your computer, um, just use your iPhone, use your iPad, um, whatever it may be, and go in and uh, work with the items as well. I'm going to click over really quickly and just see paper ship so you can see what it looks like. Dum -dum -dum -dum. And you know, here you are, you can be annotating things as you go along. Um, really nice. Now let's do Zotero app. So I wanted to show it like live, uh, but since I couldn't, um, <laughs> um, I can see right there. I see it on the app store, et cetera. And again, sorting and highlighting, commenting and et cetera. And it's free, um, which is really cool. Right now, only Mendeley 
and Zotero have this available with Papership and only Zotero, as far as I'm aware of, um, has an app by itself. And I frankly like Zotero's app better, at least on an iPhone. I don't know about an iPad, I haven't tried it. Um, but at least on an iPhone, I find the Zotero app is easier to use than the Papership one. But anyway, they're, they're really nice. Um, recommend um, exporting citations if you want to back them up always a good idea um, it's been a long time since i've heard of uh, one of the major citation managers have a glitch where they lost stuff um, i don't know if zotero ever has if they have it's been a long time um, proquest um, several years ago and truly it's been like six years or something um, they lost everybody's citations just poof off they went. They did something on their end and they were having to go back and basically by hand pull stuff out. So they were only doing it upon request. And it was a royal pain for a lot of folks. So I uh, recommend having a backup somewhere um, so that you don't have things only in, in particular, only in the online version or only on your desktop in case your computer crashes, something like that. Um, also, if you're not sure, if you go, you know, gosh, I really want to try a citation manager, but I don't know which one I want, that you can go through and you say, you know, I'm going to download these like 10 references and I want to try them in RefWorks. Now I want to try them and Zotero, um, that you can export them and such. And uh, let's see with RefWorks. So I go, you know, last importing it, export, you can import. I say, oh gosh, how do I, how do I export? Oh, is it under tools? Ooh, is it under search? You know, type in export, eh, export. And they'll tell you, well, it should tell you. Uh, you know, it tells me if I do it in the right place, instead of looking for the word export in the names of my files or anything in the files, if I go to the actual help section and it says exporting and how to re export references, etc., and how do I import them and stuff. So um, it may take a moment to figure out how to do it. But it's pretty straightforward and you can get, I can lots of folders and I can say, you know, I want to do stuff with these. And let's say I wanted to actually create a bibliography with these guys and I wasn't just inputting it directly into um, a Word document, which you can do with most of these. Um, but let's say just create a bibliography for me and there it goes. And it's created a bibliography. And if we look at this, we may go, you know, this doesn't look quite right. Hmm, I have to go back and fix an awful lot. <laughs> um, so, uh, just so many things that are do, do not match APA 7th edition at all. Um, and um, even though I have this set to APA, seventh edition, sentence case, et cetera. Um, this is giving a link, which is internal to the Saybrook Library, internal to Saybrook University. Um, your professors may be completely fine with this because then they just need to click, takes them right there. Um, they may want the DOI, the digital object identifier, where they need to go to, uh, it'll take them to the official location, which is generally the journal publisher, and um, it may require an extra step to go find it in our library. Um, so this may or may not be what your professor wants to see. However, if you look at the format of this, that's not how these are formatted. <laughs> uh, this, this being um, a dissertation, um, that's not how it's formatted these days. So you know, if we did uh, APA style.org, and I don't know if you guys have used this before, so I'm, I'm just uh, hopping through there to, to look. Um, and let's say I want to do a dissertation, and I want another reference. Um, da -da -da. Published dissertation or thesis reference, and I see, hey, this looks different than it used to. <laughs> and this is what these things 
look like now? And it has the name of the university in there. It has this doctoral dissertation, et cetera. And if we go back over here, all that's missing. All that's missing. And so this is an example of why I don't like to use RefWorks. It's easy to import things. It's easy to move stuff around. It's user-friendly in a lot of ways, but to me, one of the big reasons I want to use it is to be able to generate references that are useful. And each and every one of these doggone things, I'd have to go through and look up information and go to fix it. And I find that very tedious. And as you can tell from my voice, rather annoying. So uh, you may or may not like RefWorks, but if you are comparing them, um, see you know how much how much you need to do if you are using one versus the other versus a, another one um, when you're generating references, when you're doing whatever it is that you primarily want to do with the software. But again, you can import, you can export, so you don't need to necessarily go to the same source and import things multiple times. Um, you can just uh, get the citations, export them, pop them in the next citation manager and see what you think. Um, I will say the annotated PDFs, I don't think that you can export those. I think those are specific to each one of them. So that, especially with the annotations, um, that those uh, you'd have to do again if you switch to a different program. Um, so this is kind of the why you would want to um, pick something that you like uh, and then move forward, but definitely play with it and, and see what you like. Um, Mendeley um, is something I'd happily to show you um, if we have time. I'm qualifying that because I was trying to log into Mendeley earlier. Um, it's nice and user-friendly. Uh, it looks a lot like um, RefWorks does, um, a bit easier to use in certain ways, but for some strange reason, it takes forever to log into, and I'm not sure why. Um, so if we have time, we'll take a look there. Um, shared access. You can collaborate with fellow students, with colleagues, with your professors. As I was mentioning earlier, you can share just the folders that you would like. Uh, with most of these programs, you don't have to give access to all of your folders. You can add comments to people and say, hey, you know, um, let's say you, you are submitting something to your professor. This is what I'm working on. Do these look like good articles? And your professor might say, well, you know, I suggested um, looking for um, uh, something that is uh, a double blind study, and this isn't one of those. Or, uh, you know, in reading the, the conclusion of this uh, article, the authors seem to have um, been applying their their conclusions more broadly than seems to be reasonable. I mean, it's a, it gives you an opportunity to have comments on a particular document that you guys are talking about and like to highlight and, and you do that kind of thing um, if you want. Uh, that uh, is really very, very handy. And so how you can share access um, is something to keep in mind. Um, let me take... One quick peek here, do, 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 do. and um, the access then also uh, should be secure, um, meaning you aren't just saying, hey, everybody in the whole world can look at what I've got here and do anything with it. You have to invite somebody, you have to send them a link or put in their email address that they then accept and they go in. And some of them make you use um, multiple forms of authentication that sort of thing. So let's take an example of a shared folder. I'm going to do Zotero because I've got it open. And um, going into li my library, I have group libraries. And so if I go over here, the race and diversity study group, and it's done unfiled items. And where do we have comments? Do we have comments right now? Hmm. Well, let me just, uh, let's see, 690. We have here, we have notes, and a note here. Check out the highlight line in the abstract testing to see if it will actually sync 
which it did. Um, <laughs> but this is, uh, we were playing with this and, and uh, as we were uh, sort of testing it out among a group of us, it's like, oh, hey, cool, that does work. And, and again, you can use multiple colors. It can mean different people. It can mean different things. It mean questions, uh, whatever all it may be. Um, and uh, you can have notes, multiple notes, people giving notes back and forth, et cetera. Again, we're looking at tags, and we put in a tag for uh, this particular class in this case. But that's um, a way that you might consider the shared access might be helpful. So I say always remember your critical thinking hat. Make sure that everything that's supposed to be in the reference is there. The author, the date, the title, the journal name, blah, 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 all of this stuff. If it's missing, is it supposed to be missing? You know, sometimes there isn't an author. And then the the title of the work comes up first, you know, the way things usually go. Um, but make sure that if that information was there, that it got in there. If it populated without the DOI, the digital object identifier, go look it up pop it in, or you can stick it in the record. Um, a, I mean, I find it nicest if there's something that I don't have and you know I want to have, um, just looking, oh, okay, whew, this DOI is here. So if I cite this, it's gonna pop the DOI in there. If I look at this other one here, I go, okay, cool. I go, oops, but I don't have a DOI. <sighs> yeah, I should look up the DOI. And then I could go and figure out what the DOI is go look it up and pop it in there. Um, you don't have to do that for everything that you are putting in here. Um, I mean, I suggest as you're going along, have something that that's, you know, well, here I've got, you know, testing or miscellaneous, that sort of thing. But put things in here that are, are, you might want to go back to, you might want to sort later, you might want to get rid of some of these things. Um, I'm not saying you should download absolutely everything out there, but if you're kind of going along and go, hmm, I don't know, eh, maybe that you can go back later and that you can weed stuff. And um, if you're going ahead and, and weeding and you're looking at this one and you're going, well, you know, does this have the, oop, doesn't have the DOI in there. You know, I think I'm going to probably want to do that one. I'm going to go get the DOI. I'm going to put it in there. And, you know, here I'm going to go look at the, the text of this and I see blah 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 okay and there's the deal whoopsie it's giving me too much stuff oh fine um and go back to the info pop in the DOI and I'm gonna get rid of this extra garbage okay and now I've got the DOI in there and um Again, something that, that's handy. Um, so as you're going along, you can add that stuff. Or if you have the output and you're proofreading it, you can go, whoops, that's missing. Need to go get that. Also correct, uh, check for correct style. Um, is the capitalization correct? Are the italics there that are supposed to be, like for the name of a journal, that sort of thing? Is there underlining? APA 7th edition doesn't have underlining. <laughs> so that'd be something you go, ooh, not that. And no URLs behind the proxy servers. Uh, so as I was showing with the TCS ed system, um, like, I don't know if we still have it open, but uh, nope, wrong spot. Um, so where RefWorks was giving all of this stuff and I say, ooh, TCS ed, ed system, blah, blah, blah. That's not the, the official DOI. Um, so that's not what you would be having there. Does everybody understand what I mean by the, the official DOI? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, oops, oopsie, let me get back over there. All right. And I like Curious George. So this is my, my reminder of remembering your critical thinking hat. Okay, so if you've not used a citation manager before and you're going, well, I don't know which one, um, cost, obviously, uh, is a reasonable thing to consider. Um, there are a lot of them that are free. Um, they may be free because, hey, they're free. <laughs> um, they may be free because they have a 30-day free trial. Uh, RefWorks, uh, there's a charge for, but because you are part of Saybrook University and we get it um, with a whole pile of other databases from 
ProQuest, um, that particular software package is offered to the, our university community for free. Um, with some of the other free ones, so to speak, if you put a really huge quantity of information, which if you're putting in tons of PDFs, you will eventually hit your limit. Um, then there's a charge if you want to uh, store a whole pile of PDFs there. Um, if you're not putting a whole pile of PDFs um, into uh, your citation manager, um, one of the, the um, more well-known uh, popular ones, um, you're not gonna hit your limit. It's just if you are putting lots of PDFs in there, then yes, you will uh, eventually hit your limit. Um, can you access it the way you'd like to? Uh, if you are using your computer, um, your iPad, your your phone, your whatever, can you use it? Um, and uh, you know, if it's important to you that you be able to use it on your phone because you have downtime where you're being bored silly and you say, well, you know, I could play uh, Angry Birds or you know something silly, or I could read my article <laughs> or do something with it, you know, then make sure that you are choosing a citation manager that lets you do that because there's an app for it. Again, may not be important for you. Um, how easy is it to import or add information? So as we saw, you know, if the DOI wasn't there, oops, is it easy? Can I pop it in there? Can I put notes to myself? Um, can I take a book or whatever it is that's not in there that I'm not importing from a database or Google Scholar or someplace else. Can I just type it in by hand? Is that an easy thing to do? Um, so however you're going to be use it, using it, is it something which is comfortably easy for you? And does it offer the PDF features? To be honest, this is such a wonderful, wonderful feature that I would say um, you'll probably regret it if you don't <laughs> use that. Um, but if you're a person who likes to print stuff out and highlight uh, a piece of paper, you know, having the PDF feature online may not be even remotely useful to you. Um, but if it is something that you think, hey, I would use this because it's so easy to copy and paste, you know, um, then make sure it works the way you like it to um, and make sure that it uh, has the features that you'd like. Um, as, as an example, um, I was showing highlighting in different colors. Unless they've changed, RefWorks only lets you highlight in yellow, um, both Mendeley and um, Zotero let you highlight in a bunch of different colors. Um, that's something I like. Doesn't mean it's going to be important to you, but just figure out what works for you, what's valuable, and that the product that you're selecting has the features that you really like. And is it easy to collaborate? You may not need to do this, but I will say that many faculty members at Saybrook are asking their students to um, create folders that they share with them so they can see how their students are coming along in their research, you know, earlier on in the semester before they get the, the final papers and such. And many of the faculty members are saying, hey, I want you to use RefWorks for this. Um, and so you can use RefWorks or if you really like using Zotero or Mendeley or EndNote, you know, if you like one of these other ones and it also lets you collaborate, reach out to your professor and say, hey, you know, I use this other one, but it lets me share my folder uh, with you too. Is it okay if I use that instead of RefWorks? Um, I suspect most or all of them will be completely fine with that. But make sure you double check if there's a, like, oh, you need to use RefWorks so that we can um, be in touch about the research that you're doing. You know, that I think for everybody is, is the goal if the professor wants to do that, but make sure that they're okay if it's not RefWorks, just because many of them are asking for RefWorks. All right, so now you're thinking, well, okay, what else should I think of? Well, does it support the citation style? We're using APA 7th edition. So APA 7th edition is out there for the, for the things that we want. Does the software allow me to edit the data fields that I want? Um, so like RefWorks, if something is, is wonky in there, well, let me go and fix it. 
or what well, with any of them, you know, if it's not what it's supposed to be, is it going to let me go in and fix it? Is it easy to learn and use? That may or may not be important to you. It may be uh, important that you um, can uh, do what you want to, and you may be willing to learn. Is it glitchy? Um, some of them are, and if it's too glitchy for your taste, don't use that one. And you like the look and feel of it. So we're coming down to the hour. I'm going to just really quickly be wrapping up. I want to mention we have a citation manager's guide. This is um, in the Saybrook Library. It tells information about the different products, the costs, the pros, the cons, Zotero, blah, blah, how much it costs, and Mendeley, da, da, and note, da, da, and others. Um, so this is available. If you wanted to get there, you go to the library home, instructional guides, and then citation managers is one of those. So that's something that's there. Um, so Tara's one that's mentioned, Mendeley, RefWorks, again, this is a wrap up of the cost. Um, these softwares let you manage your references easily, make it easy to put in reference list for your papers, may let you easily import things from Google Scholar and elsewhere to um, cite, add citations to your papers. And also um, there are videos and tutorials that are available to answer your questions. Um, I hope that uh, the, one of these tools will be useful to you and it'll help you in your studies. And if you have any questions, um, again, that citation manager's guide I mentioned is available. Um, please feel free to email me or to reach out to the library. You know, go to the Get Help tab in the library. Um, you can uh, email us. You can use a contact us form. You can schedule an appointment with us. Um, my colleague, uh, the library director, uh, Laura Rice, and I were available. Um, you can, with different contact forms, et cetera, um, just uh, let us know if you have any comments and and we welcome your questions at any time and so that's it uh, for the presentation but i'm happy to stay on if either of you have any questions no just thank you so much it's very helpful thank you yes thank you well you are most welcome